famous ancient Greek historian Herodotus once wrote of the Amazons or as he called the Moir Pata, killers of men, a tribe of fierce warrior women. Though in today's world, the name Amazon is strongly associated with Jeff Bezos' mighty online delivery empire, it still carries a heavy association with these gender role-breaking, fist-fighting, sword-swinging, arrow-shooting, single-breasted warrior women of antiquity. For centuries, they were dismissed as mere legend, but in the last decades, detailed investigations have revealed that the Amazons were very real, and they were a fearsome force to be reckoned with. The Amazons are believed to have been the descendants of the nomadic ancient Scythians and Sarmatian people. Their territory ranged from the slopes of the Caucasus Mountains between the eastern end of the Black Sea and all the way to the vast Eurasian steppes. In every myth, whether they be Persian, Greek, or Scythian, the Amazons remained consistent in their descriptions. They rode horses, shot arrows, were uneasy around boats, and even wore pants. However, the question remains. Who were they really? In the Greek myths, Homer first mentioned their existence in the Iliad. They appeared fighting against Achilles on the side of Troy. In Hercules's ninth labor, he was tasked by Eurystheus to steal the belt, or girdle, from an Amazon queen. Another story mentioned the ill-fated marriage of Theseus and Hippolyta, resulting in one of the earliest perspectives to the traumas that parent separations may bring on their children. In ancient Rome, the mythical stories about Amazons was reenacted in the gladiatorial arena. Women gladiators were be given the names of famous Greek Amazon queens and fought in hand-to-hand -hand combat to the first cut. With such fantastic tales retold throughout the ages, it is understandable why most people assumed the Amazons never existed. Their legends and history challenged the male-dominated establishment and planted seeds of rebellion in the minds of their women. However, in the 20th century, Russian archaeologists began to re-examine their existence when excavations of Scythian kurgans, Scythian burial mounds, revealed startling finds. The motives to the myths about the Amazons in the minds of the ancient Greeks, they never questioned whether the Amazons truly existed. Their tales were used to contrast the natural values 5th century BC Athens allegedly carried. Athenian Greek women were be expected to be good family women, productive of male heirs, and zealous in maintaining the household. To be anything less of those traits would be Amazonian in nature. Amazon women according to ancient Athenian men were loose, brawlers, hot-tempered, and unable to fully mature into adulthood due to their carefree lifestyles. Of all the accounts mentioned about the Amazons, there is none which speaks more clearly than the works of Herodotus. In his account, the languages which were spoken by the Amazons, though linguistically similar to the Scythians, still differed enough to be a hindrance. Herodotus noted that the Scythians assumed the Amazons were never taught to speak correctly. Though their dress appeared similar, they were worlds away from being the same people. Rumor had it that with no hope of returning home, the Amazons resorted to a life as raiders, plundering every Scythian village they could find. Herodotus went on to discuss how after the Amazon raids, the vengeful Scythian men went after them. But, after days of conflict, efforts were made for a peaceful outcome. Both groups were able to learn enough about each other's dialect in order to communicate. It was then that their desires for blood were soon replaced with the desire for intercourse. These two groups eventually intermarried and became the Scythian Sarmatians. They then moved northeast to live a nomadic way of life. It was also mentioned that this group created a tradition of training both men and women in the ways of hunting, shooting bows and arrows, horseback riding, and the basics of warfare. Though it may seem like a technicality, in this, there can be room to further explore what Herodotus was saying. Herodotus stated that these Amazons seemed like Scythians, yet did not speak Scythian fluently. He noted that when actual Scythian men met with the Amazons and fell in love, the men were given an ultimatum to either leave or join them in their quest to return home. If the women were Scythians, why would they ask the Scythian men to leave their customs and families behind? The clues about the Amazons, as mentioned by Herodotus, discuss a group of people who had little in common except for technological similarities. With these slight clues mentioned, how could the women be considered Scythian at all? Merging of myth and fact of the Amazons according to the ancient Greeks, the term Scythian acted as a generalization for an entire nomadic cultural group. As far as the ancient Greeks were concerned, anything past Thrace and heading to Inner Asia was essentially the land of the Scythians. If one were to analyze this massive generalization, one would notice that this region accounted for thousands of miles and consisted of hundreds of cultures, languages, and ethnicities, which may have been com- His passages go on to describe how the returning Scythian men dealt with their own people and slaves, not recognizing who they were. However, given this description about the possible formation of the Scythians, could this tie together to the reason why the captured Amazons spoke Scythian badly? 
rather than being that they were of an entirely different group, could it have been that they were the offspring of slaves and women who ran away from one of the Scythian villages? In the passage, it clearly states that the women and slaves were able to put up a worthy fight against the war-hardened men who had been absent for 28 years. Could such a long absence have created a cultural shift making women the dominant warrior over men? And could this have led to the traditions of warrior duality between the sexes that was shared by the Scythian Sarmatians in the years to come? Archaeological facts about the Amazons in 1993, the mummified remains of a Scytho-Siberian woman from the 5th century BC, famously named the Siberian Ice Maiden, was excavated from a burial mound, also known as a Kurgan, in the Republic of Altai, Russia. Forensic anthropologists eventually determined her age of death between 20 to 30 years of age due to breast cancer and severe trauma sustained from a fall. The Ice Maiden's body, along with remains of two horses, were oriented toward the east. In later excavations of other Kurgans, this was revealed to be a consistent custom. The Ice Maiden's burial mound held a plethora of items revealing further insight to the mysterious Scythian people. But of all the incredible artifacts from her Kurgan that fascinated the world, it was the garments she wore and the tattoos she had, still preserved from the arid permafrost of the steppe. In her larch wood coffin, she was adorned with a yellow silk tussa blouse, a striped wool skirt of crimson and white, a tassel belt, thigh-high white felt leggings with a marten fur, a polished metal mirror by her side, and a three-foot-tall headdress. Even though Russian archaeologists had assumed her to be a priestess of some kind, the Ice Maiden's funerary dress closely resembled the depictions of Greek Amazons from the 5th and 6th century BC Greek vases. In further expeditions, Russian archaeologists continued excavating over 150 additional ancient Scythian kurgans in the Altai mountain regions, Pokrovka and Kazakhstan. To their surprise, they discovered that almost one-third were women of elite warrior status. The kurgans included bows, daggers, and the women appeared to be of higher rank. Some of the remains had women in battle dress no different than the remains of warrior men. There were young women showing characteristics of bow-leggedness a trait resulting from a life of constant The Amazon Scythian hypothesis has convincing evidence to make it a strong possibility. However, they still may not have been the same people as warrior women known as the Amazons. As previously mentioned, the land of the ancient Scythians encompassed thousands of miles. Within those thousands of miles are also thousands of possibilities leading to many more questions. In the 20th century, there was further discussion about whether the Amazons were women at all, but Asiatic groups who contained less facial hair than the Greeks. A highly unlikely but not unusual theory to consider. After all, conquistadors once thought that Native Americans of South America were Amazon warrior women, simply because they fashioned